The second principle that makes for supernatural wealth is the principle of diligence. There's a difference between hard work and diligence. In hard work, you commit your strength to what you are doing. But in diligence, beyond committing your strength to what you are doing, you are also faithful in trusting that help will come. Sometimes you find the Bible using the word diligence. A diligent person is hardworking and faithful. Because faithfulness is not just commitment to your assignment. Faithfulness is believing that there is a lifting in what you are doing. A hardworking person receives wages. A faithful person receives promotion. The Bible said, a faithful man, he said, if you are faithful in little, you will be faithful in much. Because faithfulness is what leads you from one keda to another keda. So when you find a diligent man, he is both hardworking and faithful. That means he believes that what he's doing, someday, sometime, it will become big. He doesn't know how, but he knows that supernaturally, somehow, something will shift him. And so the second principle for prosperity, supernatural prosperity, is diligence. When a man becomes diligent, invincible forces begins to promote him. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, it said, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rains unto thy land in his season, and bless all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Are you seeing hard work and other things there now? So it is the blessing that supernaturally shifted the person. That's why I said, seest thou a man diligent in his business? Proverbs 22, 29. He said he shall stand before kings. Diligence had faithfulness involved. And so it promotes you to stand before kings and not before men. men. There are many people who are hardworking. They are not diligent. They are doing the work but they are careless. Very hard working, but careless. You can't find focus. You can't find order. You can't find foresight. You can't find expectations. They just show up every day and they are doing the work. No. A diligent man works with focus. This is the road I'm following. If it is not this road, I won't take it. A diligent man has expectations. I'm trusting and hoping that in the next three years, I'll be here. A diligent man has foresight. He doesn't think only of today. He also thinks there are many factors involved. And a diligent man is trusting that somewhere, somehow, beyond what he's doing, help will come. And because of that, even when it looks as if it's not working, he's giving his best. You can come to that guy, he's a mechanic, but there's a way he speaks. Every other mechanic is talking anyhow. That guy knows that one day a king may walk into his shop. And so he's polite. You come to his mechanic side, welcome sir. What may I do to help you? How can I be of help to you? Thank you sir. He's walking, yes sir. All right sir. But find a hard working person. He just show up. Oh God, relax. This thing no easy. You will meet him in that mechanic village in 20 years. Because it's only hard working. There's no focus. There's no courtesy. There's no foresight. His mind is limited to the job. But a diligent man sees more. And because he does that, he opens up his possibilities. And God will see those values. And on the strength of that, God begins to lift him up. That's why Isaiah 1.19 said, If you are willing and obedient, then you will eat the good of the land. There is a willingness and there is an obedience. You cannot be obedient except as there is another principle or another law or another invincible personality that you are paying attention to. If there is no law guarding what you are doing and all you have is energy, you will go nowhere. And so regardless of what you are doing, you can be selling water, you can be cooking food, you need to have a law that, that, that governs you. That law that governs you is what we call diligence. Even ministry, many go nowhere. 
They are very hard working in what they are doing, but they are not diligent. Have hazard over everything. And the point comes, people will tell themselves, I know you are anointed, but you are not the only anointed man. People call you, they want to speak to you, what do you want? Please, please, please. Ah. You are walking to a place, people meet you. Get up! Get up. By the time everybody get out, you will come alone and kneel down and start begging God to bring 10 people. 10. <laughs> no diligence. Talk to everybody as if they are nothing. That's why most times when I go out, people throng to touch you. You will see some protocols. Some protocols, if they want to hold people who are approaching men of God, it's on their neck as if they want to strangle them. They will grab them like this and throw them down and... <laughs> Don't do that. Too. I'm not Jesus Christ. What is this? I went somewhere. Somebody was approaching me. The protocol. It looked as if he watches. I'm sure that guy watches wrestling. <laughs> I know the place of security. But please, these people are not animals. And so I devised my way of handling people. When they are coming, I say, don't struggle. Don't struggle. Don't struggle. When you calm them down, I'll pray for everybody. They will calm down. And even if you have to control people, don't dehumanize them. Hey, see, you have to be careful in what you do. Because there are some people who may not rush, but they are watching to see how you will treat the people. That's why when you start a ministry or a work, the people who should really help you, sometimes they are watching. Let's see how he runs this for one year. You come to church every day, you are around, you are preaching the word, you are following what God is telling you, they are nodding. After two years, they will now show up and say, I've been following you for two years. Uh -uh. You have been following for two years and you didn't come when we were looking for help. Somebody met me yesterday. They have been following me. He, he, he took his time. He's a big man. <laughs> he didn't even ask me to pray for him. You've been a blessing. Say, so where are you doing your stuff now? I said, we are at the ecumenical center at the smaller hall. I said, don't you want to own yours? <laughs> if I call this person's name, you will shout to. These are the kinds of people that have 300 over 50 to 100 hectares of land. Hectares. They talk only hectares. He will talk and, and nod like this. Meanwhile, they, these kinds of people, they wait for one year. They wait for two years. They are seeing what you are doing. And you come to church. You do this. You insult this one. You scatter this one. They are coming. You kick people out. They will say, Kai, it's anointed. God will help you. <laughs> you find some people they are music ministers nobody is like them they don't they are hard work you know they can be in the studio for 10 hours to make one watch one song but because they don't think beyond hard work they will now come out the person that should help them maybe the person just throwed in jean and shirt and you know where do people disguise themselves it's only a poor man that wants to put everything everywhere because his value is in his appearance. They say great men are not dressed in gold. Scratch them. You discover they are made of gold. And the person strolls and says, hello sister, how are you doing? Please, I'm, I'm a bit busy now. You are being busy away from 100 million. You are busy away. You are busy away. And so when God wants to prosper you, he will teach you diligence. Diligence comes with hard work, focus, foresight. It comes with a lot of things. Preparing yourself to be a holistic person. Whatever it is you are doing, let a poor man be able to enter. Let a king also be able to enter. If what you are doing is so narrow that only the poor can enter, you will labor for a long time. It could be a prayer ministry. It could be a prophetic ministry. It's not only the anointing that brings people. Create that standard. It's called diligence. This is why it's difficult for God to prosper people. 
because the kinds of people God wants to send into their space to lift them, they can't enter. They've choked everywhere that such people cannot enter. And it's a big issue. You want to prosper, you've got to be diligent. Because diligence is looking at the palace. He said, it will stand before kings and not before men. men. Before kings. There are some people, they will study the Bible for 10 hours to come and preach in a 30 minute service. But when they are coming for the service, they can't as much as dress well. The, the, the burden of God is on them. And you want a governor to attend that service. You want a director to attend that service and to attend consistently. You have not made room for kings. And so kings can't come. That's why kings only come to the brightness of your rising. When you are rising, they'll wait for you. Keep rising. It's when the glories, the brightness, they now know that, okay, there's accommodation for us. It's called diligence. You are selling food, be diligent. You put the hard work for the food to be sweet. Wash the plate. If, if it's benches you have, clean it. Tidy the place up. It's called diligence. It's beyond hard work. And when you are not diligent, you may never prosper. You'll be so talented, but you may never prosper. This is the plague and the undoing and the bane of many people. 